not unlike the old Orthodox Jewish belief of blood. Sometimes that can pre prohibit them from doing transfusions and that sort of thing. That is their belief. Their belief is that by putting somebody else's blood in your body, you could be risking the salvation of your soul. That is their belief. I don't understand it, but I'm not here to question their beliefs. Are there Jehovah's Witnesses in prison because their children died because they refused to give them transfusions? Dozens. The jurisprudence says your belief doesn't mean anything. You're not going to change that. Your belief doesn't mean anything. When you filed the false document, and just yes or no, because see, you're not answering the question. No, just yes or no. When you filed the false for forged or fraudulent document, did you commit a crime? I would not have knowledge. No, see, you won't answer the question. You're convicted. Yep. Either answer the question or you're just going to be convicted. When the document was filed, was the crime committed? Yes or no? The law says yes. When the banks filed the false, forged, or fraudulent document, was the crime committed? So, so how does this all shake out then? It shakes out based on on uh, well, see, I don't on, want to spend on, all day on this ruling. one subject. Well, the courts well, ruled for a hundred years on it. Okay, so, so what you're saying really is that you know this is a matter that has to be addressed with the courts. A judge actually no, no. has to. You know, I mean, otherwise we're. we're you're We're not all going to be arrested. There's not enough jails out there for all of us. <laughs> yeah, they're building them pretty quickly. You know, I, I, on the stand of okay, correctness. Okay, but I don't, I, I don't want to spend all day on one subject. Okay. If Just, you recorded documents in the county recorder's office, get your shit together quick. Yeah, yeah. Get it together quick. Well, how can you reverse that? That's why I said go talk to somebody at a title recording office. Okay. They have they in in San Diego there's actually a manual, okay, that uh that I've reviewed. It's about 500 pages from the uh County, San Diego County Recorder's okay, office. It's I, quite lengthy. I just want to let you know. There is a part there, there there's actually a page insert in there that gives instructions and it's it's for the, these clerks to use to refer to and it's uh, it, there's actually it's it's titled Modification of the Deed okay, of Trust. Okay. I can't spend all day on this. We got a okay. lot of stuff to cover. There is an errata form. Er, errata is a legal term for like a correction. Okay. There is an errata form. Thank you. Okay. Okay. I would I would just say maybe you wanna might want to discover that. Because an errata form undoes what was previously done. Okay. But it, it's just E R R A T A. Okay. It, it, it's a scary thought. You know, yes. I, I really don't think these homeowners... We've got to get off okay. this point. Thank okay. you. Thanks, yes. John. Question a little further on that subject. If <laughs> I am just on the document as the new trustee, do I still need to be as concerned about getting that document okay. altered? Okay. See, here's what I have with the English language. I don't know anybody that speaks it. The lady I was talking about earlier, she did it. She got 11 felonies. Oh, you speak English. Cool. <laughs> we got to find some other people. Maybe we'll get a group. Okay, the guy that was listed as the trustee, he calls me too. He got 12. I'm like, can't help either one of you at this point. Patrick, got a question back there. Uh, so... I, I don't want to spend much longer on this. You got to do something about it. You got to. If you do something about it before they do, you're probably going to win. Okay, I'm, I'm After they do something, you're hiring an attorney. From what I've seen, it's it's a twenty-five thousand dollar case, ten grand for the retainer, five thousand dollar hits as your retainer works down. Yeah. All right. You said something when we started. Question the authenticity of the signatures. In, in, right from the very beginning from of very every signature. Okay. Not now. these signatures. See, if you leave out a word that I use, 
that's a lot like not wearing your flag jacket going into combat. If that's what you choose to do, don't ask me to be tying up your intestines. I've done it. I don't like doing it. So it's not the validity of the signatures. It's the validity of all signatures. That also means yours. That's because if you question the validity of your signature, are you therefore not stating that perhaps your signature is not valid because you didn't know what the hell you were signing? So this is different than rescinding your signature because the only signature on my mortgage that they file is mine. Sure, they made an offer. They made the offer. That's correct. So you're the only one that has to sign it. So I'm a party to the fraud. Well, but I didn't know it. No, you're a victim of fraud. Of course you're a party to the fraud, but are you the the victim or the victim right. right. So you're not so you do not rescind your signature for failure to disclose to you everything. In other words, their failure to perform. Uh, what how, what that? The, in other words, you don't rescind your signature, you just question the authenticity of the signature. Right. A rescension document is, is totally different. You're just putting in the pleading that you're questioning the validity of all signatures. Your signature being one of those, their signatures, the notary signatures, all signatures. Guess what the word all means in legalese? Wow, there's that English thing. So, yeah, I, yes, yours would be included. But no rescission, that's what I want to find out. What's that? Hold on for a second. I I don't want to go in the cognitive. Yeah, I just, yeah. Oh, did somebody touch on cognitive? Oh, okay. If, if you're looking at American jurisprudence, 2D, 46, blah, 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 then... Yeah, the requirements under cognizant, in other words, the rules so that you know that what you're assigning really meant what it meant. Uh, you don't need to go there. See, you'd need to go there if this was valid. Is this valid? When will this become valid? Have they given you the loan? And we don't need to argue what's in it. It ain't valid. Okay, Patrick. Uh, if a notary works for the bank and they notarize something, don't they have some interest in it? And isn't that illegal? Okay. Because notaries aren't supposed to have an interest. You, eh, eh, uh, you got to be real careful with the term illegal or not legal. There's lawful, there's legal, there's a violation, okay. there's rules, there's codes, blah, blah, blah. In, in most cases, it, there's going to be a major issue. Yes, not in all cases. Not in all cases. In, in most, or at least a lot of cases, there's going to be an issue. Okay, so But that is such an unimportant concept in all this. A and we do elaborate on it because you're going to find that it's so repetitive, it evidences the fraud. Are you going to pull an attorney's bar card because he has a notary in the office that, that notarized saying that this person had to sign because the other person was gone? No, that's not going to get you anywhere. If there's a standard practice where they're during document mills, uh, then you're going to have an issue with that. Okay? So it's not that easy to describe. Uh, Patrick. Okay, while we're on this, I, I, I want to jump to something real quick. Uh, when we talk about the, the notaries, a notary is a public officer. 
not an officer of the court like a process server. Notary is a public officer. I just want you to make a note of this, and, it, and it's, it's in here somewhere. Uh, page six, evidence of bias. Look at those two. Page six. Now, doesn't that create a problem? How do we know how biased the courts are? Well, they do the sales on the courthouse lawn. Can you run down there on the courthouse lawn and throw up your used car business and start hawking cars off the stairwell? No. Why the hell can the bank? Who the hell says the bank can? Well, the government. Well, now, wait a second. The government's saying in Arizona there's three laws that make it so that the bank can sell your property that they stole and they can do it on the government's property. Would you call that an evidence of bias in favor of the bank? Well, is there any more evidence? The, the law says that the bank's presumed to be honest in the court case. So they can lie to the court, be considered honest, steal my property, and sell it at the court. <laughs> okay. All right. You know, I mean, come on now, guys. If that doesn't thump you in the head. Okay. If you have any concept that the court is not biased, then I'll tell you what. You go down and you try to convince the court that everything that you say is correct, all of the evidence notwithstanding that means that you've committed all these felonies, and you want to go ahead and, you know, add a little modification to the courtroom because that's where you want your master bedroom now, it ain't going to fly. So why can the banks do it? That is just prima facie evidence of the fraud we're up against. Okay, go ahead, please. Okay, in my attempt to prevent my house being auctioned, I recently filed a notice of uh, intent to preserve interest. What does that thing could do to me? Well, uh, notice of intent to preserve interest. That includes my down payment and all the upgrades I've done in my home. Well, it, uh, okay, I don't want to jump in that. Title 26 law, but it's the only example I can really think of. Uh, a notice of intent to levy, as issued by the Internal Revenue Service, is not the same as a levy issued by the IRS service. The jurisprudence tells us that a notice is only a notice. It's not an actuality. It's not a legal consummation. I don't know that a notice of anything means anything in any situation at ever at all. Yeah, I, it, if it's a notice of intent, to buy, then yeah, that, I don't see how that could be an issue. What? Okay. Well, no, it shouldn't have, because then she'd have problems. Yeah. Oh, okay. Uh, there are times when you can put a mechanics lien on your property. There, there are definitely times. There's all kinds of times where you can lien stuff to protect it. We're not going to go into that today. We just don't have the time. But I don't see how a notice of intent to do anything, as long as it's not threatening. No. If, if it's not threatening, then you're just letting the world know that you, you're trying to aggressively assert your rights. The law is very clear. You only have the rights you aggressively assert. If you don't aggressively assert your rights, you do not have them. 